Hi there. We are so glad you joined us today for this message. We hope you enjoy it. Kick back, learn about Jesus, and be blessed. Talk to you soon. God bless you all. So, today we are at uh, the end of uh, Matthew chapter 11. And uh, Thanksgiving week. And uh, we were in the store. Last night we had a little bit of uh, practice here for worship. And uh, I want to thank all of you that are partaking in the worship uh, playing. And then also out there in the seats. Uh, After that we went to the store. And my wife left so I could tell this story now. Uh, There was a lady... We were with the, she, she was, my wife was going, ah, we'll wait, we'll go and try to get Thanksgiving meal on Monday or whatever. It's not enough time. I don't want to do it Sunday after church. I don't want to do it tonight after practice. Then she said, well, we'll go ahead and go to Walmart and get the stuff. So we went to Walmart. There's three turkeys. So they had a whole bunch of the expensive ones. You know, but my wife, you know, well, that's only 89 cents or a dollar 50 and I'm going to get this. And I was like, who cares? Just buy whatever you want. So I happened to overhear another lady standing there and we're all looking around. Do they have any more of this? Where'd they move all the stuff? They're consolidating everything as they run out of it. And uh, there was a turkey there and and, uh, she had already picked out what she wanted. This lady picked up a turkey. They were all kind of pretty small. She said to one of the guys going by, she said, uh, uh, do you have any of these turkeys You know that, that are bigger? Do they get any bigger than this? And he said, no, ma'am, they're dead. <laughs> so it's funny. The, go to Walmart if you want to laugh. Or feel better about yourself, right? If you're depressed and think you got it bad, go there about 3 o'clock in the morning. Look to see if you find somebody not in pajamas. Uh, so we're at this end of, cha- of Matthew chapter 11. We're going to be going from verse 25 to 30. And uh, I'm excited. So I'm going to go ahead and read it to y'all. I, I, I labeled this come to me. In 25 it says, At this time Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of the heaven and the earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, learn from me, For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Let's pray. Lord, we just thank you for your word. We thank you for the grace that you've poured into our lives. And Lord, we just ask that you would flood back all those little things that we can give thanks about this week as we uh, come around our family. And uh, let our meditations of our heart and our words just be glorifying to you in Jesus' name. Amen. So, here we go. In this uh, first verse 26, uh, 25 and 26. First of all, I want to see that that, uh, it says, at this time, Jesus said, and... uh, In uh, King James, it says that uh, Jesus answered. 
And when they, when they, a lot of people will say that what that means is that Jesus was just pronouncing out loud to people. Jesus answered. So there wasn't a question posed, but he just answered. So he was speaking aloud to people. Uh, in the in the NIV, it, it just comes up to say, at this time, Jesus said. But I want you to think about this. In the King James, it says, Jesus answered. So if Jesus answered, who was he answering? I'm not saying that he was just proclaiming out loud for these people to hear what he said. He's answering the Father. So what we see is a relationship of constant back and forth between him. And he says, I don't say anything I haven't heard the Father say. Now, how many of you have voices in your head? You don't have to raise your hands. (laughs) And some of them can be good and some of them can be bad. Uh, Some things will cause harm to you. You know not to listen to and some things will edify others. But anything that edifies yourself causes harm to you. That's hard for a lot of us to believe. But uh, So in this place, he has a conversation with his father. And it also says in Luke, it, it says that there was a joyful uh, conversation. It was joyful. So, you know, when you have these voices that I'm talking about, and the joyful things are the things that are edifying. It says, full of joy through the Holy Spirit. He spoke. So that is where we're supposed to be when we talk to the Father. Whatever it may be, we're supposed to have joy. And the things that steal our joy is what we're going to learn about what what steals our joy today. I'm kind of make a, a case for that very thing. And hopefully, one or two of you might hear something you hadn't heard before and see it in a way that you hadn't seen it before. So he says, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to children. From the wise and the learned. Uh, When he says this, he's saying, why spiritually? Uh, The... Pharisees were the ones he's talking about as this narrative has continued all the way through Matthew. As he's talking about the law, well, this is, you've heard this said long ago, but I tell you now. So when he's saying learned, he's talking about the the people who have so much spiritual, uh, how's the way I said it the other day? You can't answer me. Uh, they're so heavenly minded, they are no earthly good. Okay? Um, They've got their doctrine and all the theologies and they've gone to the seminary and they've done all these things and they understand this book as it is just written flat as a book. I've studied everything I know. That's what he's talking about. Some of these things, if you know people who have all the head knowledge in the world, but it's never touched their heart. Uh, and that, that gives you a self, uh, like a pride. And so when he's talking wise and learned, that's what he's talking about. People who are wise of the ways to edify themselves, to... to, uh, to preserve their own life, preserve their own things. And he hid those things from them. But he revealed it to the children. In uh, John chapter 6, verse 41 to 44, I'm going to read here. And I went a little above the actual scriptures so we can kind of get an idea of what was happening at this time. And uh, Jesus had just said that I am the bread of life and he who takes me 
gets eternal life. And the, and the Jewish leaders that were there, they were not happy with this. They got upset. So he says, at this time, at this, the Jew, Jewish, uh, they began to grumble about, because of what he had said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. And they said, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph? The father and mother that we know, his father and mother, how can he now say, I came down from heaven? So they have this idea, this, you know, he's already said this, how do we know this? But they don't understand, they don't know the story of his birth. They don't know the story of his conception. They just know they see this man and they've seen him grow up and they know he's been around. But how does he say now he's from heaven? Well, we know his mom and his dad and where he came from, and where he lived. And that one time that he really pissed us off when he was 12. And he started reading scripture in the synagogue and we're like, you know. <clears throat> so now they're upset with him. And he replies, he says, stop grumbling. Among yourselves, Jesus answered, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them, and I will raise them up in the last day. Now, when they said, when he said this, man, that started a fight. Because now he's claiming that he is the only way. And taking that and putting it onto this scripture, we understand that. The reason why they didn't understand was because they were thinking flat. This is what I know about him. And this is, I know his mom and his dad. I, they don't know the rest of the story here, the rest of the story there. Plus that what puts them out of business. What good am I? Um, how many of you remember, are old enough to remember uh, Kodak stores in the mall? And I was a kid, my dad had a really nice camera set up and loved to take pictures of vacations and whatnot. We used to love going in the Kodak store and looking at, I mean, lenses like this, you know, and cameras and all oh, how much they cost. Uh, overnight, gone. Military technology, digital, taking pictures with your camera, whole all of them stores, everything out. People out of business everywhere. People unemployed. There's kids uh, that traveled around with their parents who taught that kind of stuff, and they're Kodak kids, kind of like military kids. They just went around and did that. Uh, so anyways, that just tells you how fast uh, things can change, and we don't realize it. So the Father who sends me draws them. That that word, we talked about this here with the men, that word is actually translated uh, helco, and it means to drag. Uh, how many of you were drugged to church as kids? By your father. No hands. Oh, one, <laughs> two, three, four. Yeah. My dad just went because my mom said so. My mom was the one that did the dragon. This is the father dragging people to Jesus. It's an awesome thing. Thank you, Jesus. So we learn that from this scripture, we learn there's a, a relationship that uh, is beyond the relationship that... Uh, well, can you think of anyone that you have a relationship like that with? Where you can, they already know, can finish your sentences, know what you're thinking. Yeah. Your wife, your husband. And, and uh, that was given to us by God. And this is, this is kind of weird to understand intimacy with Him. Now when you say intimacy, men all go, but sex. I'm not having sex with God. No, it's nothing to do with sex. It's, it has to do with communication, knowing what the other person wants without having to speak, knowing what they expect out of you, 
and your boundaries with that person. And uh, how many have pushed that button that makes that thing go off like you wouldn't? Yeah. Now that button has a nice big guard over it. She didn't put it there. I did. <clears throat> she never pushed my buttons. Uh, she didn't ever have time because I was always ramming on her buttons. Don't ever do that, guys. It's not a way to live. Uh, it, it's, uh, you know, if you always stay in trouble, you don't know the difference. It doesn't work very well. So in, uh, in verse 27 of Matthew, it says, All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son. And, to, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. In uh, Mark chapter 10, verse 42 It's Jesus called to them. Now this here is, uh, the backstory to this is, this is when uh, James and John were asking for a place. I want to sit at, uh, can you do something for us, Jesus? He said, sure. He says, can, can one of us sit at the right of you and one at the left? And then Jesus tells them, well, th those, you know, I can, I can let you experience the baptism I have. I can let you experience the things that I have. But those two things are assigned to someone that I don't have anything to do with. I don't, they're for being prepared for someone else. And then we take it up from here. After that conversation, the disciples that are there, the other disciples, the other ten, hear this and they start to get angry. And then we'll jump into right here. It says, Jesus called them all together and said, You know, those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them. And, uh, and this is part of proving a case here at, the, at this deal. They lorded it over them. The, uh, the Pharisees, uh, uh, they would, the rabbis, they would hand the laws down and you have to do this. And they would watch people and make sure they were doing what they were supposed to be doing. But then there was always that place of gray area that could be blessed upon themselves. You know, uh, when we see someone else doing something and we'll tell them, you can't do that. But then when nobody's looking, we do it. Uh, have you ever been in one of those churches? Yeah. You, you can't have, you, you smoke? Well, you're going to hell. You drink? Well, you're going to hell. Uh, I was told one time in a, in a debate with someone who goes to this church, why does everybody smoke in the front? And uh, I was like, well, I don't, what, what are you, what are you, I, you know, oh. And uh, so that conversation went to another pastor. It was a friend of mine of another church. Well, why does he just let everybody smoke in the front? What do, what do you do? And he said, when I was a young man, he's a Baptist pastor, he said, when I was a young man, I was to understand that the Baptists smoke behind the church and the Pentecostal smoke in front of the church. <laughs> and uh, that's the way he was, he was like, I don't, to each his own, you figure it out. Well, the, the Holy Spirit, when he is in your life, he decides the time that you need to lay things down, the time in your life when you're ready to get rid of things. Um, man doesn't point those things out and say, you need to stop this. I mean, you can go to a brother or sister and say, look, here, I can see I've been here. I can see this is a main problem. This is a main thing. Well, you can't make anybody stop doing anything. Learn that with daughters. Anybody have daughters? As soon as you disapprove of a boy, man, that's the one. Yeah. Anybody can tell you about that, but you never know until you do it. And, uh, and then you're fighting to recover from that mess. So he's, he's telling them now at this time he's changing it. 
He's saying in, in 43, uh, not so with you, talking to the disciples. Instead, whosoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whosoever wants to be first must be a slave for all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. So as we see the things that the Pharisees have in their minds, the things that they think that when the Messiah comes, it's going to be all out war. He's going to come in here and tear this thing down and start our own deal. As we learned about in the beginning of this, John was imprisoned. And uh, he was in there for a long time. And he sent his disciples many reasons why. But it's okay sometimes to feel like, am I doing this thing right? Was I right? Am I? And the way the Lord dealt with him was not to reprimand him, just to give him scripture to remind him, see, this is, what, this is what's going on. This is the way it is. We're to edify people with scripture. And uh, so he did that. And then he boasted about him. He, he spoke all, he spoke very highly uh, about John. And it's, so that's okay to get into that spot. And you see that even the son of man came to serve and not to be served. Uh, that is an awesome thing to think that one day he might serve me with that meal that we're having in heaven. Is it going to be easy for me, the who I am, to sit there and let him do that? I don't think I'm going to have a choice. That's what he wants to do. That's what we're supposed to do for one another. That's his heart. We're supposed to take that heart on and serve one another and love on one another. In uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14 and 16, see, Jesus has made an extraordinary claim here and uh, saying that no one knows a father except for me saying once again, no one comes to the Father except for through me. Man, that ruins Oprah Winfrey's day. Sorry to say it. There's a whole bunch out there that I can do it this way, I can work around it that way. There's religions out there that don't have anything to do with Jesus. But if you believe this book and you believe in Him, you, you know that He is the only way. He is the only way. <clears throat> this explains a lot of it right here. The person without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, but consider them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only by the Spirit. They're understood only by the Spirit. The person with the Spirit makes judgments about all things. But such a person is not subject to mere human judgment. Now why is that? Now we, As we went uh, two, three, when Jody was uh, speaking, um, and I've used it a few times, be afraid of the one who kill the, can kill the body and the soul not the man that can just merely kill your body. Uh, this, is what we're, this is what we're speaking about here. That's why we're not subject to, yeah, if you do something wrong, you murder somebody, you're going to go to trial, you're going to be subject to man's law, but when your body is killed, you still have a whole other life. Uh, I used murder, I don't want to get into all of that, but I used murder as a, as a sentence. I didn't feel like if you were stealing a, some pack of gum, that would work very well. It would be as drastic. Uh, For who has known the mind of the Lord 
so as to instruct him. And uh, no man can say that. No man can say that. If a man says that, you better run. But let me tell you this right now. There is men saying that and women saying that and living that in a way that they don't understand what they're doing. That's because they don't have the spirit. But they're saying, God, <laughs> oh God of all greatness and wisdom, I'll never drink again if you do this. I'll never do this again if you do this. How can you tell God? Even, even to the point, and I can hurt some people's feelings right here, and I apologize. Even to the point of telling the Lord what to do with your health. Or telling someone else, that's not your sickness. You don't walk in that sickness. That is not yours. We claim it. And then when you stay sick, don't claim it. When you stay sick, you go, well, that was your faith. It's because you don't have enough faith. Because you don't believe. There's no room for God there. You know, if you are terminally ill with something, if you have been diagnosed with something, then that's when you just say you give it over to the Lord. You're supposed to give things over to the Lord before they happen. But you give them over to the Lord and things change. If you take it upon yourself to to try to earn it or demand it from God, there's that's that's a little bratty kid that gets spanked and put in his room, right? But we have the mind of Christ. See that last one. For who has known the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Understanding, we have the mind of Christ. That's not saying, well, I'm going to try to get it. And when you get into this thing, that is something that comes with the life that you've been getting, the extension of your life from here to eternity. Uh, when you come into this world of being a kingdom citizen, born again, second birth, you become, as you grow, you can become part of the mind of Christ. You, you understand now what he's believing. You have that relationship like you have with your wife. You fear God because you don't want to let him down. As I fear my wife for all kinds of things, but I don't want to let her down. I respect her so much, I don't want to let her down. That's the fear that we have towards the Lord, or the fear we're supposed to have towards the Lord. So he makes an extraordinary claim. Now, verse huh, Matthew 11, back to Matthew 11, verse 28. And uh, verse 28, he says, Come to me. All you who are worried, weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Lord, give us rest. Now, I want to show you all something here that uh, a picture. When the Lord gives us rest, that's a, a rest for our soul. That's a rest that the world can't give us. Uh, something you can't find, something you can't buy in this world, outside of God. And in uh, Matthew uh, 
chapter 23. I have uh, verse 4 is the verse that I have up there, but I'm going to read a little more than that. I'm going to start with 1 and come to 4. It says, Then Jesus said to the crowd and to his disciples, The teachers of the law and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Okay, does everybody understand what that means? Sit in Moses' seat. They sit in, they are the law givers. They give the law. They hand it down. This is what you're supposed to do. This is what you're supposed to practice. The Ten Commandments and everything else that was added to it. In verse 3, it says, So you must be careful to do everything they tell you to do. But, <laughs> but, now these are written in red here. It says, but, do not do what they do. Well, wait a minute. It says, do not do what they do, for they do not practice what they preach. Well, wait a minute. Do not do what they do, but they're the law givers. And then verse 4, they tie up heavy, cumbersome loads and they put them on others, other people's shoulders. So, what is this telling us that living under the law does to us. This is going to upset some of my friends out there. It's a burden. And it's something that I could just give you because of my position, just give you this is what you're supposed to do. But that's not what Jesus does, see? He gives us what we're supposed to do and then He gives us a way to do it. He doesn't say, you do this, whatever it is, you cannot use your ox on the Sabbath, but I need you to get this done. Or if your ox gets in a ditch, you can't pull it out on the Sabbath and the water's rising. Hope you got money for another ox. You know, Jesus doesn't do that. He, he gives us a way out of everything. So they tie up cumbersome loads and put them on other people. But they themselves are not willing to lift a finger to move them. Going even further in 5, it says, Everything they do is done for people to see. Everything they do is done for people to see. See how great I am. See how much I know. See how holy I am. And Jesus is not about that. We just learned that he didn't come. He came to serve. He came to be the one that helps you get that ox out. He's going to be down in the mud with you. When you're out there mending fences or whatever work you have to do, He's out there with you. Sometimes even when I don't know what I'm doing and I try to attempt something, I know He's there because all of a sudden it's like, oh, that. <laughs> That's just like the way it's supposed to go. But I didn't know that. It came from somewhere. I'm not going to say it came from the devil. I know it came from the Lord. So, I'm sorry, I'm getting excited about this kind of stuff. Now, 1 John uh, chapter 5, verse 2 to 5. And some of this stuff is tough. Uh, this is how we know that we love the children of God. Now, this is a big thing. Some people don't even know if they are a child of God. But this is how we know that we love them. 
by loving God and carrying out his commandments. Okay? <laughs> In fact, this is love for God to keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. Okay? They're not burdensome. Now, this is written in red, too. It's not up here on... I probably should have us change that. But anyways, it, it is written in red, believe me, if you looked it up in your Bible. Uh, so Jesus said this. Now, what is he saying again? He's saying that, you know, that we love God, and we, we, we love God's people by carrying out His commandments. But then he says his commandments aren't burdensome. They're not heavy. But then he just said that the, the old stuff that Moses is heavy. Man, this is heavy. What is he saying? What is he talking about? Well, he's talking about God's commandments. Um, uh, and the commandments of God are not burdensome. For everyone that is born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world. Even our faith. Who is that that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Okay, well, here's the place where people get caught up. Just so you know, this is a place where people get really caught up and hung up on this. It says, for everyone born of God overcomes the world. And then they go, well, no one's born of God. Because they don't even, yeah, well, Jesus, okay, we love Jesus, okay, yeah, and he was born of God. But he's only one. None of you are born of God. So then you have to have all you have to be three times as righteous as the Pharisees to make it into heaven. This is not what that says. Right? Because we see that it says this is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Even our faith. It, it's there even over and above your faith. Who is that that overcomes the world? Only one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. And see, these people who he's talking to, these Pharisees that we've been seeing, are, are they don't get it. They don't believe. How can this guy come from heaven? Who is mom and dad? We've seen all these things. There's no way. Now he claims that he's from heaven. This is what he's talking about. This is abolishing their thoughts, their process, their job. That's why he's a threat. So in the thing that I want you to, to see here in Matthew 11, at this very end here, he's very adamant to say, come to me. All you who are weary and burdened. And I will give you rest. Now. What is weary? Some people, I like to say, plumb wore out. Smooth wore out. Because, you know. When you have a one of those like rub stones or whatever, you run it smooth, right? Um, my boots, they get smooth, wore out, uh, slipping on everything, right? <laughs> so, so in that, uh, what he what he's saying is that anyone, all. 
And he's not saying, oh, I think you need to call that 1-800 line and talk to that lady over there for nine ninety nine a minute and she'll tell you what. No. She's, it's not, not saying, oh, I think you need to turn on this show and they're going to tell you what. Right? It's not even saying, it's not even saying, come here and listen to me. It's not. It's not saying anything other than come to me. Written in red, meaning Jesus. Not come to me. Not come to my wife. Not come to anybody else other than Jesus. No other way. I mean, that's very plain. That's very simple. Doesn't mean you have to obey this, and you have to do this, and you have to practice this, and you have to... No. Come to me. And I'll give you what you need. I will give you rest. Now what kind of rest? Man, we get tied up in this. Tied up in this. Rest from trying to be good enough. Rest from being burdened. Now, you know, even our jobs can be burdensome. Even Thanksgiving can be burdensome. Man, they're coming over and they're coming over. When your family starts getting around, oh gosh. You know what I mean? What are they going to say? What are they going to do to blow it up this time? You know, all that stuff is burdensome. Even right down to, did I, is there still a turkey left for me? And I, I don't, you know what? They said, this is going to be the most expensive Thanksgiving ever. You're still having 30 people at your house. (laughs) He provides for his people. Amen. There's there's turkeys running around here everywhere. If somebody doesn't know, I can give you the time when they come across here. And I can tell you, they come right up and talk to me all the time. I can snatch one. But if you need a turkey, they're out there. And you know, I don't do this often. I guess I have a couple of times, haven't I? I can't, I have to stop saying that now. Darn it. I see on TV stores with bare shelves, one or two items out. Nothing. And they're like, well, we're running out of everything. How many people have gone in our Walmart here in Azel and saw their stuff? There's a lot. Is it just Texas? Yeah, Texas is blessed. My dad said he was he went to get some water. He has one of the CPAP machines. He has to put purified water in or distilled water in it. So he went to get a bottle of water for his machine. He went to the store. And they're in Arizona. And they didn't have any. And the lady said, Yeah. Everything, all those ships out there, we're waiting on everything. We don't have nothing. And my dad said, well, I certainly hope that the water I put in the machine doesn't come from China. <laughs> and the lady said, it probably does. Everything else does. That's what people think. They say things, smart things like, you know, why do you go hunting why don't you go to the grocery store and buy that meat there that hurts nobody? Nobody got hurt in that. What? How do you how do you wrap that around there? It's, yeah. Okay. So twenty nine says I'm back in Matthew eleven. Uh, twenty nine says, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me take my yoke how many of you all know what a yoke is man i'm going way over 
Is, will anybody give me five more minutes? Raise your hand. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, I'm writing that one down for later. So, so take upon my yoke upon me. Everybody knows what a yoke is, right? You've seen them. They're illustrated. I've used them in sermons and had them hanging and explained what they are and all this and that. You know, and you hear people say things about the yoke and their scriptures don't be unequally yoked with someone. Um, This yoke that he's talking about is a yoke that is made by a carpenter's son, a woodworker. It is perfectly fit to you. Now, this yoke that is made is for one. It's not for two. It's for plowing. It's for tilling the soil. Now, I'm just giving this to you the way the Lord showed me. You can have team yokes. You can also have single yokes. This particular one, if you know about yokes, they use leather and everything to fit right to the animal the way that it needs to be so that the animal is comfortable and it will not get hurt or anything at all. Right? This is the idea. Specially made for each one of you. That yoke. It's not burdensome. It won't wear on you. It won't hurt you. And it's light. Okay. With that, (laughs) he says, For I am gentle and humble of heart, and you will find rest for your soul. Man, that's powerful right there. You will find rest for your soul. First, I want to talk about what this means. And I I am going long, and I'm sorry. But we had a lot of testimonies that was good. This yoke is not... uh, A lot of people believe this is Jesus helping me. No. What I want you to understand, this is Jesus driving you. He's directing you. He has the reins to your yoke. You're not out there doing it yourself. You're now under His yoke. He's making the way. You're asking Him, what do I do? He's making the way. He's making the critical decisions. He's doing all the things in your life that you used to do that wore on you. That's a beautiful picture. Now I want to talk about the rest. In Matthew 7, chapter 7, verse 13 and 14, we're talking about the the gate here. Enter through the narrow gate, for the wide gate is broad, and the road leads to destruction. And many enter through it. Okay. So, many enter through that gate because they're driving themselves. They're going their own way. They're leading their own life. I got this thing. I got to figure it out. And I'll, I'll talk to God when I need to talk to God. But other than that, I got it. And I got to figure it out. That that's a wide road because there's a lot of people on it in this world, right? And we know the narrow one. But the small gate and the narrow road leads to life and only a few find it. I pray that the few that understand God's word is many in the light of our thinking of many and few. I hope everyone in here, or everyone who's been in here, amen. So, I want to run this past y'all. And if I'm wrong, I'll get corrected later. God bless you. 
Genesis chapter 2, verse 1 through 3 is an exciting part of chapter 2, but it's right at the end. And he says, Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had uh, that he'd been doing. And so on the seventh day, he rested from all of his work. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy. Because on it, he rested from all the work of creating what he had done. Okay. This rest for our souls can't be found in a day off. This rest for our souls can't be found in a vacation. This rest for our souls can't be found in sleeping. Now, you can look up rest and it'll tell you it's sleep, vacation, time away from work, time away from family, time away from things. Okay? He didn't take any time away. He was right there with everything. Right? The rest he created. He made the rest, the place for us, the place for our souls. And he did it on the seventh day, and he blessed that day. Now, there's churches out there that will tell you that the seventh day is the holy day. And that's the day that you go to church. And there's places, there's churches and people out there that will tell you that the only way that you can do this is to not work. You can't do this, you can't do that. You have to have all these things that you do from this time to that time. and Light this candle and do all these things, right? To enter that rest, to be right with God. Let me tell you, what are we finding out? That rest is for the ones who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Amen? Amen. The one who believes enters that rest. What else did you have to do? There is work for us to do after that, but that work is driven by God. Amen? Amen? Not by me. Not by what I think or what I need or what I do or my schooling tells me this way I have to approach these people. None of that. So is that rest something that we find here on the earth? Heck yeah. But it's for the ones who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Right? It's not a place of going to sleep. It's not a vacation. It's not taking a day off. It's not going to church. You don't have to go to church to be in His rest. You don't have to go to church that says, come to me. Now, I'm not telling y'all you don't have to come here because I love seeing y'all. And if you haven't got it by now, we are a relational church. We like to know everybody. We like to have everybody around. We like to hang out. We like to talk. That's the kind of thing. And if you don't feel that and you're out on the edge, I'll raise your hand because I'm going to swoop you in here now. So, This to me is very powerful. And man, I'm going way over. And I'm not even done. I'm not even done. So Hebrews chapter 13. This is a bigger one. Um, No, no, it is chapter 3. I got to remember to keep putting my glasses on. Chapter 3, verse 13 through 19. Forgive me for uh, my, uh, yes, but encourage one another daily as long as it is called today. There's the Sabbath. (laughs) Every day you wake up in the Lord is a Sabbath And, and you should be able to rest. Because the rest is for your soul, right? That's not that's not a that's a place that you go once you once you're there, you're in it. You are in it. 
so that none of you may be uh, hardened by sin's deceitfulness. We have come to share in Christ uh, if indeed we hold our original convictions firmly to the very end. Uh, as has been said today, if you hear a voice, do not harden your heart as you did in the rebellion. Do not harden your heart. Today is the day. Every day is the day. Anybody that knows me, I'll put things out there. I don't put my name on anything. I don't, Pastor Greg, I don't even care if you, you can call me Greg. You can call me, don't call me what my wife calls me sometimes when nobody's around, but you can call me Greg. There's The titles are just titles. That's all they are. But I like to, I like to put Choose Jesus today, because every day is when we have to do that. Every day. <clears throat> do not harden. Today, if you hear a voice, do not harden your heart. <clears throat> those who were, uh, those who were there. Now, oh, help me, Lord. <clears throat> those were they who hardened then rebelled, were they not at all, Mo, uh, not all those led, or Moses led out of Egypt, and with whom uh, was he angry for 40 years? It was not with those who sinned, with those bodies that perished in the wilderness and to whom God swore that they will never enter his rest. If not for those who disobeyed. So we see that we are not able to enter because of unbelief. And this, this right here tells us everything. We're not able to enter because of unbelief. Not because we didn't follow this or do that or do this correctly or do that correctly because we don't do those things correctly. Even if you try to follow all the laws and read all this stuff and gain everything, you're not going to do it right. Believing is how you enter the rest. All right, let's, uh, let's go to verse 30. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now, why is it easy and why is it light? As we learned, because now he's in control. He's steering you. He's got the idea uh, of what you need and, and what's going to happen in your life. Um, I'm going to skip around a little bit. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 8. In this relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in the very nature of God, did not consider equal consider equal with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing. God, Lord, make me nothing. By taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, being found in the appearance as a man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death and even the death on the cross. Two deaths there. Death to himself and death on the cross. All right, First Timothy chapter 1, verse 10, uh, starting on verse 15. Here is a trustworthy saying. This is from Paul. Deserving, the deserves a full acceptance. Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. Who I am the worst. Now, he's not around anymore. I believe I'm the worst. Amen? You guys can agree with me. <clears throat> But for that reason, 
I was shown mercy so that in me, the worst of sinners, Jesus Christ might be displayed. His immense patience and example for those who will believe in him and receive eternal life. Now to the king, eternal, immortal, visible, though only God, be the honor and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And I want to close it out with this. Luke chapter 19, verse 9 and 10. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house. Today, this house. Because this man too is the son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and save the lost. He is giving his yoke out today to anyone that wants to accept it. Anyone that wants to accept it. Uh, Kenny and Mandy, you want to come up here? And uh, Billy, Teresa, you want to come up here, Kenan? I'm going to have these folks stand up here in the front and... uh, Receive anybody that wants to have any prayer and uh, any burdens that you may have that you need to you may need to uh, get off your chest or you want to talk about something you need prayer for something these people are here to come and talk to them today. I hope I made a case for you all to to know that you have a place with the Lord. You have a place in His heart. He loves you. And He wants to put His yoke on you. It's made just to fit you. Just to fit all your situations, all the things that are coming into your life. And if your load's heavy, well, come and lighten it today, Lord. I'm going to pray now. Father God, we just thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for all the unsaid prayers that we have. Lord, we know there's sick people out there and people that aren't here today because they're sick. Father, I I just pray that you would uh, mend their bodies and their hearts. And Lord, we thank you for your attention to detail when it comes to us, Lord. We thank you for the attention that you stand up for us in heaven. You're constantly, constantly interceding for us. That kind of love is hard to give. But we know, Lord, that we may say, Oh, that guy is going to go to hell for all the things that he's done. For this and that about people, Lord. But we know today that we don't have to do anything to go to hell. We don't have to do absolutely anything. But to go and be with you, we have to do something. And that is to believe that you are the Son of God. And that you came to seek us and that you gave yourself for us. And that every time, Lord, one of us gives something to you or accepts you, that thanksgiving going on in heaven is great. <clears throat> Lord, I just ask that you protect us and keep us this week as we go. In Jesus' mighty name.
Amen. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you were blessed. If you have any questions, please give us a call, 682-327-7082. We are at 7955 Reed Road in Azle, Texas. Y'all have a good day now, you hear?